afternoon. I think in, in my introduction, I made it quite clear that uh, my area of expertise is, 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 is not tax law. I um, am interested in tax law only insofar as it impacts on the industry where my uh, efforts are usually geared towards, and that's the mining industry and the mine and mineral law. Uh, and it, it is a very small section of, 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 of tax law, I realize, and, and there are a lot of the other provisions of taxation which impacts on mining companies as well, but it, it, it's no different from any other tax, and I, I try not to focus on that because it's, it's just too big an area. If I just look at the number of Tax Amendments Act that comes through every every year, just to try and keep up to date is a is a, is a major is a major issue for people in practice, and and I wouldn't for one minute try and give people tax advice because um, I think it will be too dangerous to do that unless you practice in that field all the time. I spoke, and some of the other speakers spoke, about the uncertainties uh, which make investment decisions and, and other decisions uh, in the mining environment very difficult. I focused on five of those. Uh, and just as an example, of questions which are being asked, and I don't necessarily provide the answers here. I'm just trying to demonstrate that the way the legislation is drafted and the interaction between mining legislation and tax legislation creates uncertainties and issues which should exercise you as tax pr practitioners' thoughts and minds as to how to deal with these issues. Um, the first one, is a capital gains tax issue and is something which uh, has come about because of the change in legislative regime as far as mineral rights are concerned. Nothing has changed in the tax environment except that capital gains tax was introduced, but I don't think that, that, was, that that's such a problem to anybody. Uh, the second uh, is the royalty regime insofar as it's the old topic of dumps. Uh, is that mining or isn't it mining? Uh, which dumps are governed by the Mineral and Petroleum Resources Development Act, which are not? Uh, if you extract material from mine dumps uh, and process it, are you processing are you, uh, or are you mining? Uh, those sort of questions create tax difficulties. Uh, and there are a few peculiarities about the way in which the Royalty Act deals with the transfer of what is called a, a, a mineral resource and would include material that's got mineral content that, that is in mine dumps. Uh, the, the third and fourth subjects are really determination of gross sales and EBIT, both caused by the deeming provisions uh, in, in the Royalties Act, which require you not to say what you've earned and money that you've expended uh, on uh, the mineral that you mineral resource that you sold, but to deem to, to, to include in your in your gross sales that which you would have got if you sold it at the specified condition, and the money that you would have expended had you in, uh, improved, refined the mineral resource from the level where you sold it until either the Schedule 2 unbeneficiated or unrefined level or the Schedule 1 level. Uh, that to me creates a lot of difficulties and although SARS has made valiant attempts in trying to resolve some of those with the introduction of Section 6A and the rollover provisions, uh, I believe that, that, that there are still issues uh, which hasn't been resolved, and I hope to be able to demonstrate that at least in, in one instance, it is impossible to determine EBIT uh, having regard to the provisions of, of the Royalty Act. And then a last issue is the never, and somebody asked in the audience, when are you, or I think maybe one of the speakers, the old subjects of when are you mining, when are you... <laughs>